okay so this is what I decided I didn't want to get into dirt right so because Molly Crew obviously already covered that right <laughs> I was thinking okay what could I talk about that's because I did say something about somebody is in a negative way but I wasn't clear who I was talking about I hope Carrie didn't think it was him because it wasn't him it was somebody else and I don't want to go back into it so those videos are dead and the one that I made with the Steve I Jim was even worse so, I know you guys, if I talk about something that you can relate to, but see, I don't know. If it's guys that are watching that were on the strip in a band, they can relate to it. Most of you don't even know who I'm talking about. So, like, if I say the supposed rivalry between my band, Fatal Attraction, and creature Mike will know what I'm talking about and a couple other guys nobody else will because no one knows who creature is really they didn't b get as big as we did but here's the thing so if I'm gonna talk about creature at all I want to make clear that I've always been friends with a guy who started the band the guitar player Trix Trixie and Vitolo him he was a great older than me i met him when i was in elementary school i was in like fourth i was in fifth grade fourth or fifth grade whenever jaws came out so i was in fifth grade and i'd always wear jaws shirts jaws and that was, you know it was like kiss but before i'd really gotten into kiss i kind of was into it but not like big time so tricks i'll just call him tricks that's his name it's not his real name, but Vitolo is. I would hang out with his brother, kind of, uh, Kurt. And he's still in the music business. He's like a music attorney or something like that. And he's helped me out trying to, you know, tell me <laughs> that I blew it signing with F&A Records. And just so all you know, F&A Records is a farce label. You'll never see a dime. Only if you sign another band, help them sign a band, which just brings in more suckers for them to make more money, you will never see anything more than 100 bucks. I've seen a zero, and we have sold thousands and thousands. And just a quick checkup, my friend did several years ago, it was over 12 million illegal downloads of fatal attraction immortal the one that f and a put out and there's you know well, i've been into this so anyways fatal attraction we were pretty big on the strip from 88 to whenever we well to 91 and then they kept going i quit so i'm like i'm not going to go down with the ship i'm out of here they got another bass player and then i went to see him at a few you know bars and I'm, you know, they'd taken off the makeup and trying to work with the lyrics because everything had to do with vampires. So if, we're, if you're not a vampire, it sounds stupid. And uh, I said, you know, just in case, just in case you get signed, go ahead and keep playing my song, which they did, but they didn't. I mean, a big deal. We got Indie Label, and that was, was able to... With the indie label and the management, we were able to get out and tour, and that's that's why. 
and we were big and we could see you know other clubs like the mason jar and the stage and buddies in phoenix area they all wanted us to play so we would go out there and they pay us thousands of dollars to play like a three night stand we got like six seven grand that's a lot of money when you're you know usually paying several thousand dollars to play at a club here until you build an audience up so you know in hollywood we could sell out any club and we get like 200 bucks 250 bucks really so we got a manager <laughs> he was the worst manager goldwater i think and associates just crap he didn't want to put any money into it. He would just give us ideas, and then he'd float them, float ideas, and then, you know, he would uh, say, you know, do you want to do that? Yes, and then he would do it in his spare time because he was a lawyer. Worst mistake ever getting that guy, but I was too busy, you know. At that point, after the trick-or-treat debacle and losing the Capitol Records thing and everything with Dick Face Mandy... I had it. That was the end of, or the beginning of 80, March. So March, April, May, 87, I was done. I was done. I tried to get another singer so we could fill, finish playing the months of gigs that we had booked. And couldn't, we tried two guys. One guy came out from Chicago. He looked just like Vince Neil, sounded just like Vince Neil. I'm like, this is not what I'm looking for, but it'll do. And we show up. We're getting ready to go to the show at the Troubadour. And he calls. He's like, I can't do it. I'm like, what? He goes, I can't do it. I I'm scared. I'm like, dude, get over it. Drink a beer and get your ass down to the Troubadour. I can't do it. Click. Never saw him again. We couldn't, I knew something was wrong, because we couldn't even get this guy over. I mean, we rehearsed with him a few times, like, eh, it'll work. And he wouldn't show up for the photo shoot. So, Rudy drew a cartoon picture of him. So, it's like, real pictures of me and Rudy and, and uh, Tony, and then a cartoon character. A bad one. With the hair sticking up, he was blonde, it looked horrible. So I ended up calling up Trey, and uh, he always had a band. He had Fatal Attraction, because we had formed it in like 85 or 6, because he had this band called Valentine, and we played two shows under Valentine. I'm like, I'm not playing in a band that's named after a guy, because if it takes off, which I didn't think it ever would, I'm not playing for a kid. Because he was in high school still, and I was, you know, 20 or whatever. 19 or 20. So he's like, well, what should we call the band? I'm like, well, I just wrote a song called Fatal Attraction. Call Fatal Attraction. We'll switch the name of the song to uh, X-Rated. Okay. So he kept going. So I would leave Fatal Attraction and start a band like Stiletto. He kept playing in the Fatal Attraction, but different members. And then they would break apart. He'd call me up because he knew I my band had broke up. I'd go play a few shows with him until I got the ideas together, and then I put together Trick or Treat. Then he was out of guitarist again. But he would find somebody, play shows. Kept, he always kept it going. And that's the thing with Trey is he kept going. Because when I can... There's a demo. There's demos on YouTube of Valentine, and they are horrible. I mean, Trey sounded like Peter Brady on you, where he's squeaking because he's going through puberty. Worse than that. But some people actually think he sounds like Getty Lee. I'm like, what? He doesn't sound like Getty. Hey, whatever. So, yeah, we did this one, like, three-song demo that this guy that was into us uh, paid for. It was like, we got six hours in a top-of-the-line studio. I was done in like an hour and a half with everything. I went in, boom, 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 the three songs. Did the, the leads. One lead I hated, but I'm like, I'm done. 
and Trey ended up going in and redoing one of the leads. And it sounds way better than mine. But, uh, whatever. So we had that, and then he kept going with Fatal Attraction playing, and his voice getting stronger and stronger. And every time I came back, I'm like, wow, you know, at least he's in tune. So he's getting better. Uh, but so the trick or treat thing really pissed me off, and just I was done. I was done with Hollywood. I was done with the whole effing thing. I got that close to becoming huge. Because Mandy never made it either. He got signed, but he blew the Hollywood Records deal. Boop! Nothing. He might say different, but that's the absolute truth. He was. He took off with an ugly stripper to Kentucky for 10 years, married her, and was gone. And came back in like 99 to make it again. Whatever. So, after Trunk or Treat, I was done. But Trey was at that last show. Everybody was at that last show. My friend, Brent. All of his friends. All my friends that I went to high school. Everybody was at that last show with Trick or Treat. Because they thought, wow, Skews is, you know, Michael Skews. They all called me Skews. No one called me Michael D. The people that knew me. They're like, man, he did it. This is it. You know, good for him. Because nobody I knew that I went to school with or anything had gotten a record deal. And everybody was like, wow, yeah, this is good. Because there was a chemistry. It's not like we were perfect. We didn't sound perfect. Listen to Molly Crew, They sounded horrible. But there was a chemistry. You had to be there. You could feel it. It was like electricity in the air. And when I could feel that with Motley Crew most of the time when they were in their early shows. And when they got better, it was more. But even at the beginning, there was a, there was a, you know, like, wow, this is there's something here, man. There's that chemistry. So with Trick or Treat, with me, Mandy, Tony, and Rudy, there was a chemistry, and it worked. But Mandy's such a backstabbing, you know, all about him that he he blew it. And that's that was his one chance to be huge. After that. He just, he was on his own, and he had no one to tell him what to do, and he, he was never going to make it. Never did. The only reason he's got a house, if he has a house, is because, you know, he got money from Mommy. So... saw the last show. Everybody saw the last show of Trick or Treat. They knew how pissed I was. They knew what I was aiming at now. Because they saw it. Dark. Heavy. They knew what I wanted the singer to look like and sound like. But Trey couldn't do that. But he could sound like Blackie in a way. So that's what he you know, don't work on your story your weaknesses work on your strengths. That's what Steve Vai said. I think he said it to me. He said it in the class. He says it all the time. Don't work on your weaknesses. Work on your strengths as a guitar, singer, whatever. So Trey kept that in his mind. Oh, that's what Michael wants. Because we'd been in a dozen different bands together and it's like, no, 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 no. Take off the pink spandex. So when I did trick-or-treat and that broke up, 
Now my friend's been uh, creature with tricks, and then as long as tricks is in, I see the only two guys I like and that I know are tricks and the drummer. I can't remember his name. Billy? No, 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 not Billy. That's the idiot singer. The singer is who I hate. Hate. He's a dick, and he knows I don't like him. I almost tried to, I almost kicked his ass several times, but I just couldn't get to him because people would always jump in the way. Because they knew I would r rip his friggin' head off. So we're coming up to a story here. So, I just want a disclaimer that I do, I really like Trix, was always my friend, always had been, always was. And the drummer was cool. Always cool to us. Always cool to me. Um, and he's doing really good up in uh, Vegas, I hear, just as a drummer in, in like, lounge acts or cover bands. Great. That's great. I can't remember his name, but, you know, we're friends on Facebook. Like I say, I don't remember anybody's name. I only remember, I only remember tricks because I went to school with the guy. And his brother, Kurt. Kurt never, I don't think, was in... Well, he was in a band in junior high, but he was never in a real band. And he took lessons, I think, from Randy for a few months, I guess. But like I said, he's a, he's in the music industry. And probably making more than anybody else. <laughs> um, so, after Trunk or Treat died and I did, couldn't get it back... And Mandy was floundering, you know, until something picked up for him. But I was just furious. So I went and I got a job and I hung out and I got drunk and high a lot. <laughs> and uh, finally, I was uh, jamming with these guys, with Tony. It was me and Tony and these three guys that came out from back east to make it. They were out here for three months and they were looking for the band to make it. So... They answered my, uh, Tony and our my me and, Tony, me and Tony had an ad in Recyc the Recycler, and it was a drummer, a singer, and a bass player. I'm like, I got a bass player, but we invited them down to the studio and we jammed with them for like two weeks, and we came, we had, you know, taught them my songs. We wrote two or three new songs, two of which I really want to play on this new album, but I can't. I got them recorded. I just can't find them where they are. And they're really sappy, but they're good songs. Hold, hold on, and uh, long ago and far away. Both written about mm, first wife. So I was doing that, and then uh, Trey comes along, and he's like, shows up literally at my girlfriend's house with full on in his full on get up leather with the you know butt the chaps. It says Trey. He's got hair down to here, which was pretty amazing because it was up to here. And But he looked, I'm like, holy crap, dude. He's like, I found a guitar player, so you can either be a rhythm guitarist or a bassist. I'm like, bass, why not? I'll jump into it. When we do this, he goes, uh, well, I'll set up a date. What do you think? I go, dude, you look great, but how do you sound? He goes, I've been taking vocal lessons, voice lessons, that. So Trey had a voice. And the first show in 88, it was still, it hadn't had that screaming that, and he, but it was close, close enough. So we played a few shows. Like I said, the country club was our first. And on the third Friday to the 13th, October, November, we played in uh, at the Roxy with Pretty Boy Dick. Uh, our ugly flit dick and uh, we play one more show and then they're like okay we want a commitment out of you and I'm like what do you mean because I've been borrowing my gear the bass, amps, everything and they're like we want you to sell your Marshall and your, and your friggin guitars and buy bass equipment I'm like no way no way they're like well then you're out of the band I'm like I'm out I mean, out, I'm kind of quit. Screw you guys. I will buy this stuff, but I will not sell it. And just like, look it, we got shows booked, da da I'm like, good for you. Give me the time, I'll do it. And Johnny, 
great guy, nice, still friends with him, but he was kind of a passive, aggressive guy. And he would get Trey to do his bidding, which was shocking to me because I raised Trey from a young child <laughs> to what he was. I'm like, what's the kid giving me attitude for? So I told them both to F off, and they did. <laughs> but, you know, five months later, they're selling out everywhere. They're playing everywhere. And they're getting written up in all the magazines. I'm like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, uh, they invited me down to a show, and that's how I got back in. They said, you want in? I'm like, yes. I go, all right, I'll, uh, I'll sell my Marshall. Like, listen, if you want, you know, you got a good paying job, because I just, I had a job with Disney and Warner, and I could, I could buy this stuff. I'm like, no, just to show you, I'll, I'll sell it, and so I can get a, you know, good bases. I'll buy a Mockingbird and a Thunderbird and all the, you know, the Nikki Six bases that I wanted, and, and, GK head, Galen Kruger 800, and, uh, you know, Risen Cabinets, Ampeg, whatever. Just whatever cabinets, enough to fill up the stage. Because back then you needed amps, a back line. Everybody had one. And they're like, okay, well, so I sold the Marshall to Johnny. I said, okay, the deal is if you ever sell it, sell it back to me. And he did. But with that money, I went out and bought a base. And then I bought an amp. And then, and then I was on the go. I was with in the band, and we were going. But there started... So here's we'll go back to Creature. I, you know, Trix would usually put me on the list to go whenever they played. And when they first started out, they were just some weird band. And then... He goes, or do we got a new image? And this was uh, sometime between Trick or Treat and Fatal Attraction. So they come out and they're friggin' Kiss. Well, they're very, they're a very blank, basic, weird Kiss. They're just, you know, platform shoes. They all basically had the Kiss, you know. It wasn't the costumes. They just had spandex, you know, black spandex things. And it was kind of a bunch of Ace Freelies and, and just white face, black lips, and black around the eyes. So it was weird. But it worked because there was, a, there was still a thing for Kiss, but they didn't sound like Kiss at all. In fact, but they had a good gimmick, which was that look, because Kiss was... At, in 87, 88, 80, 88, I think it was. There was nobody doing Kiss, and Kiss wasn't doing Kiss, and there was no tributes. There was no such thing as a tribute. So this was as close as you could get to a tribute. So they had a little following, a little cult following immediately because of the Kiss thing. They just didn't have the material. They had some good songs. Tricks could write good songs, like... One, Too Many Girls. I can still remember that song, but that's the only song I remember. But I'm like, this is cool, but it ain't going to go anywhere. And it didn't. But he, I noticed the singer was really trying. He was growling. And uh, trying to sound like Mandy, because that was the last big thing. And then it went back into the typical Hollywood screeching and spandex crap. So I'm like, oh, so this is kind of their take on what I was doing with Trick or Treat, but no Satan, no really good singer, just an idiot that growls into the mic that sounds like crap. And, uh, eh, but hey, it was Tricks, and I like Tricks, so I went. I always supported the band. But when Fatal Attraction came out, and we started getting, or they started getting big when I wasn't in the band, and when I came back, there was a rivalry. It started in the local, like, Rock City News and all that, and Concrete, Jungle, all these different magazines. So they, they were making the rivalry, and kind of the singer from Creature was saying things, and I'm like, you know, wait a minute. 
you're ripping off my bands. I mean, sure, that was a Kiss ripoff, but with Trick or Treat, you're growling. Now that I got, you know, Screaming Trey, the guy's screaming and screeching. Dude, get your own friggin' voice, dude. Don't steal from other people. Billy B. Dick. So that guy always bugged me because he was a dick. I don't even think his own band liked him. But I always liked the drummer and tricks, so I went. And I and I didn't say crap because I liked those two guys. Really disliked, really disliked that singer. And I let my dumb, slutty girlfriend, Hair Pie, know about it. That's the Mexican chick. She was, I, mean, I shouldn't have said slutty, but she is, was, is beautiful. Beautiful chick. I met her when I was passing out flyers for Fatal Attraction. And I'm like, you are coming with me. And I had a chain, and I chained it to her, put a collar on her, and then just took her. And went to an after party and took her home with me, and that was it for seven more years. But it was a tumultuous seven years. So uh, she knew what to piss me at, how to piss me off. She, Because the thing is, when I was a kid, like with my first wife, because we had a kid, I had I was really jealous of her. I think it's because we had a kid together. Because I'd never jealousy wasn't my thing, and uh, I became aware of that. And I'm like, that is not a very endearing quality. So I vowed never to be jealous again. No one would ever could ever get me jealous ever, and that pissed a lot of chicks off because they like guys to kind of feel jealous, you know, stick up for their. You know. I'm not into it. Nope. You be jealous, not me. I'm not gonna. So that's that was a problem with, cause it only worked once, with hair pie. I won't call her by her name. Cause I went out to get drinks with this girl. We were at a party, and it was kind. Of, it was me and Trey, and I think his brother, and uh, some other people. And this girl was gonna go make a beer run. Well, I wanted to go with her, just because I wanted to go to the lit to the store and slam like a pint to get a head start without paying and then uh, you know go from there and and you know kind of talk to the girl <laughs> I wasn't very loyal at all so I think uh, hair pie knew that and she was back and we took about 45 minutes getting back it doesn't take 45 minutes to get alcohol oops so apparently <laughs> this is so she went up to Trey and Trey was like, whatever, we'll wait for Mike to get back. I'm going to do my laundry. So she go, he's doing his laundry. My dumb girlfriend, we'd only been together like a week or two. And she goes into the train and kisses him. Like, kisses him. And he's like, ah! He's like, what are you doing? She's like, Michael's effing that girl. I know it. No, It doesn't take that long to get something to drink. And he's like, no, he wouldn't do that to you. Da, 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 da. And, well, I wish that was true, but that wasn't true. I was getting alcohol and doing the girl. So I come back and everybody's dead silent and sitting on the far end of the room and she's sitting over, standing here right by the door with her arms like this. I'm like, What's, what the hell's going on? And Trey's like, dude, dude, let me, let me talk to you outside. And he starts to walk over towards me and Hair Pie, the girlfriend, my girlfriend, she's like, Half-breed hair pie was the name that Tony gave her because we couldn't figure out what she was at first. Is she half Mexican and Spanish and black, or we thought she was half black and half Spanish or Mexican or Spanish? We couldn't figure it out, or something. She looked very exotic, beautiful. Turns out she was just half Mexican, half Spanish. It was the Spanish that gave her that. But I thought she was like half black, so I'm like, you know, Dad's Jimi Hendrix because he's like half black, half Indian, Cherokee, and I was Cherokee. But so that was the H B H P H, you know, half breed hair pie. That was her name. Everybody called her hair pie or just pie. So pie comes up to me and she says, "I'll tell you what I did. I want to take a kiss tray because I thought you were out messing that girl." And the girl's like, so she drops the the booze and leaves. Which was bad because it made it look even worse. I know this is not, this is a story, so I feel like I should play. <laughs>
So then she comes at me. I grab her by the hair because she's swinging, and I drag her down the hall, throw her in my truck, and everybody's like, ah, you know, don't beat her up. I'm like, beat her up? She's beating me up. So she's swinging.